all big fights, but Robert Whitaker is a former champion, sort of a legend in this division. I'm curious how you're feeling heading into this Saturday night and, and what do you think about Rob as an opponent? Yeah, one second, one second, Marvin, is the mic still not working? Yeah. There we go. Um, it's definitely an experienced opponent, but I feel very, very confident. And um, I'm not underestimating him, but uh, yeah, man, I, I have a few aces on the sleeves that he's not going to know that I have and uh you know like he's uh he's definitely very good but with that being said he's the same fighter that he was like a year ago he was he's the same fighter that he was in his last fight I'm not like I keep improving I'm more hungry and uh you know like I'm on my way up I don't believe he is so um, that's the biggest difference there do you think that's something that you can take, not that you're not a confident guy, but is that something you can take confidence from where you think, hey, I'm still improving. I don't see this guy improving. He might be sort of starting to plateau here. So I know I can go in there and do different things than he can at this point. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that shows not just in our, like not, that shows like not just in the fight, that's, that's in everywhere. Like in my training, I go in and I, I want to get better. I'm, I'm giving it my all. Like it's different when you want to just cruise, you know I mean? You know, he's a, he's a great fighter and you know, I don't believe that he goes into training cruising, but like it's the hunger is way different. Like the, what I want is not what like, you know, he's we're different. I'm like I said, I'm on my way up and he's not, that's it. When you look at the fight itself, do we are you expecting more of a grapple heavy fight, or do you think you can go out there and get into a war with this guy? Do you think he's going to try and avoid you and use his range? Where do you think this fight takes place on Saturday? How does it go? He, he can't grapple with me. He can't grapple and 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 be successful with me. He just can't. So he'll try, and I welcome it <laughs> if he does. But he really can't. Um, I can, and uh, I can do anything in that fight, and I will. Cause it's MMA at the end of the day, and uh, but yeah, man. Like I said, I think I match up very bad for him. Like I'm, I'm a, my skills match up very well for myself against him, and uh, the way that I fight will drain him, will make him do mistakes, and I'll capitalize on those. You know. What's on the line for the winner here? Right, both of you are for Izzy. Both of you didn't beat him then so do you guys kind of have to hope that Alex Piera beats him in November or do you think hey look I'll just keep fighting keep winning and eventually I, he will have to fight me one more time yeah I mean um I don't plan things like that but like I want Pereira to win just because it would excite me more as a next challenger eventually uh and I think that will happen because after this I mean I'm gonna establish myself as number one contender I mean, what's left for me? I pretty much fought everybody. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, would be, it would be undeniable another title shot with a great performance against uh, Whitaker, you know? But if it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, out of sign, it's over, man. I can, I, nothing excites me about that guy. Of course, I'll get my win against him before, before I'm done with all this, but... Um, yeah, man. I mean, the things that he can do best now, it's painting against nails. I definitely like more Pereira and, 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 you know, the way he carries himself and the way he goes about fighting and all that. Like, not much, not much bullshit, just straight bad motherfucker kind of type of thing. And that's it. Not into the painted nails look, no? Oh, hell no, man. Come on. <laughs> this, this all, this all wave got to change, man. This all wave we're, we're going, it's, it's not good. Uh, a guy you have fought, Paulo Costa, he said that he wanted to fight the winner of this fight. I'm curious, after everything that happened with you last time, you know, the weight and all that crazy stuff, is that even something you would ever entertain again? Or do you think, no, screw that guy? But then, but then he changed. This guy just like, uh, I think he changed opinion again. He's like, this guy like someday will be. I'm actually a fan of his Twitter. I'm not going to lie. His Twitter is so fucking funny. So, uh, 
I don't know. I don't think he deserve it. Not after a fight like that, especially. Um, it's not in my mind right now. You, you didn't. You didn't. What did you think of his fight with Luke? Um, it was nice to watch from a fan point of view, but that was like from a fighter, elite fighter point of view. There wasn't much. I mean, it was an all-out war. Not much game planning. Not much. Um, you know, when you go to war, you got to have a plan and you got to stick to the plan. And yes, things can go wrong and you can make adjustments, but you got to have an underlying plan. That thing was just like a brawl. Like, like both people not manage without, there was like no managing of energy, no game plan. Like, like when he got him hurt, he took him down. Like it was just like no loud brawl, like messy slugfest kind of thing you know marvin just over here uh you mentioned about adesanya what did you make of his past performance against Kananir? zero it's uh, delusional shit people left people left before the fight finished i was there bullshit came out with all that ant like all that doing that thing so he did the same thing with me come out with a samurai thing oh, i'm gonna um um revenge man like not like like do it for my friend isn't that didn't do nothing didn't do nothing it's, it's over and you know given his history with Pereira, how do you see that fight unfolding at ufc 281 i really hope like he goes out on a, on another oxygen mask but uh and i think it can, it can happen uh because that's gonna be a kickboxing fight with that being said i'm done talking about this guy to be honest and you said Pereira obviously interests you the most in terms of that match up there. Uh, you know, would you, how would you see yourself matching up with him if, if he was, of course, to take the title from Izzy? Um, well, you know, because uh, I, I think I would match up well. Um, I'm definitely more complete, but um, he's, he's a hell of a fighter. I'm not, I mean, you know, he's a, he's a hell of a fighter. I, I respect him. Um, but yeah, we like like with any other opponent, I would game plan, and I would be super ready, and I'll come in and give him my best and walk away with a win. And what have you made of his climb through the division? Of course, he's had that previous history with with Israel, and that's kind of made him kind of bypass perhaps a few people in the division. Yeah, but I mean, like like um, Strickland is now. He's not like a chump, you know, like I train with Strickland a lot, like Strickland's solid. It might be a nut, but like he might be crazy, but he's good. And um, so, I mean, you beat a guy like that, you deserve the like the, the spot you're in, you know. And then uh, I understand it, you know, this is not just, this is not like uh, an Olympic sport where like uh, there's like a eight man tournament and it's all like you know like first go with the second third go with the fourth and things like this so he skipped the line because he put him on an oxygen mask on a stretcher the last time they fought so i understand that and of course going back to your fight with uh, robert whittaker this weekend of course this was supposed to be in singapore for ufc 275 you know what was your initial reaction when you first heard that that fight was on I was pissed because this happens too many times, but to be honest, I think I'm more ready now than how I would have been um, back in June, to be honest. So it played out actually good. And at that time, you did call out, you know, you were trying to get another fight. You were calling out Till and even Hamza as well. What was the thought process behind that? Well, yeah, because <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm preparing for a fight and then that falls off, I'm really trying to like fight anybody at that point. <laughs> Uh, it's like this is uh, this is how I am. So I was just uh, calling out everybody, but I don't think I ever even called out there until like he's actually completely irrelevant at this point. I think in the division, uh, he's literally zero, delusional. Also, he can't even. I mean, how even how are we even talking about him? Like he, we can just talk about him just because he's helping comes at getting getting ready but he hasn't been fighting in a long time i don't he's done i don't think to be honest he's gonna ever come back with any decent opponent 
Um, so that fight doesn't make any sense. Uh, we come to it. Um, yeah, man, I mean, I would love to fight him. Um, later on, for sure. Let's see if he stays down, if he comes up. But, yeah, for sure, come to the, that's a fight that excites me, too. What did you think about him being matched up with Nate Diaz? How do you think that goes down? I mean, it goes, I mean, obviously he's the favorite, but, um, you know, I think more like if he would have fought Diaz before he fought Durino, Diaz would have had more time because he would be so full of himself. He might would have gassed and then if he was a five rounder. Um, Nate maybe could have capitalized, but uh, now he knows, I believe if, if, he's, if he's a little bit smart, he like, you know, like he realized like, you know, things are not like, like when I'm fighting chumps in the gym and I'm just gonna like run over them, you know, over and over. If you fight somebody very solid. So, um, of course he's the favorite. Um, of course, uh, yeah, I mean, like everybody on his last con on his last fight of the contract, they get like a. I'm speaking for Nate. They they get another um, OG or something like that. He's getting an up and comer, but you know, um, yeah, it's 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 a fun fight. Um, that's it. And then going back to this weekend, how do you see yourself getting your hand raised this Saturday? I'm gonna try to really finish him, either submission or or, or striking or knockout. Uh, if not, I'll be dominant. I'll be very dominant. Thank you. Thank you. In terms of uh, your last fight against uh, Paul Costa, you proved that you were pretty game no matter what. All the weight increases, you saved the event. Have you seen a difference in how the fans receive you now since that fight? Mm. Yeah, but um, yeah, a little bit. Fair enough. And, uh, you know, Costa went on the fight Rockhold recently. You mentioned it was a good fight for fans. What did you think of the blood smear uh, at the end of that fight from Rockhold? Mm. Weird. I mean, if you were in that situation, how do you think you would have reacted? I would have not been in that situation with Rock with Rockle on top of me. Fair enough. Thanks. Hey Morvin, what's up? Uh we are live on Twitch. This is one question for uh our viewers. Uh first of all, what do you want to say for the French fans since MMA and UFC is pretty young in France, uh and maybe they don't know you about you, what they can expect from you in the cage in the octagon uh, on Saturday? They should know the best European fighter. <laughs> Um, a lot of action, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of action and uh, a great fight. All right. And uh, have you got an eye on a French fighter also in the same weight category as you, Nasorini Mavov, which is, who is also fighting on Saturday? Uh, would you think it could be a great matchup for a 100% European fight in the future? He's all right. He, he got a long way to go still. All right. Thank you. Ciao Marvin. Ciao Caro. <laughs> Two Italian fighters are competing on the main card. Uh, what does it mean for Italian MMA? Yeah, it's uh, it's great. It's great that uh, two Italian fighters are fighting in, in Europe and uh, they're both on the same card. It's nice. I, I said it like um, Italy has to be next. You know, uh, this was uh, one of my two big goals when I entered the UFC, and. Um, one was to bring the UFC to Italy. The second one was to become the first Italian UFC champion. So we definitely make, I mean, I believe I'll make both happen, but, um, you know, the first, like, you know, bringing it to Italy, it's also a big, a big dream of mine. And uh, I'll be campaigning hard and we're going to make it happen. Uh, how long before uh, it happens in your opinion? I mean, I, I don't know. We've got to ask Dana or... The high, the high, higher, higher powers of the UFC, you know. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to do my best, and Saturday night is going to be a big step towards it. <clears throat> uh, I was just wondering whether you and Di Chirico had some training sessions together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, before we started the camp, um, we, before I started the camp, I was in Italy for like 10 days or so. And uh, he came up, uh, we trained a little bit, and uh, now it was good, it was good. Um, it was a great training session, and uh, it was right at the beginning of the of the camp. That's it, we just exchanged uh, some knowledge, and um, yeah, man, I mean, wish him nothing but the best. And last one for me, un messaggio per i fan italiani. Grandi ragazzi, voglio sentirvi tutti quando saremo in arena a fare un mega casino. Grazie. Thank you, Mark. Prego. Hi, Marvin. Good morning. Um, morning. Willeker said earlier this week that he might, or he's playing with the idea of maybe going up to 205. Uh, I was thinking you just said you fought most of the guys at 185. Is that something you might be interested in as well? Well, that was funny first, because I don't think he's ever going to go up to 205. <laughs> But... Um, Uh, yeah, I mean, eventually we'll see, but it's not in my mind right now. You know, I I started as a 185er, and I'm not the guy that, like, changed routes just because uh, it's hard. And um, so I'm staying here for sure. But, you know, 205 is good. Eventually, it's, I, I I'd like that too. Yeah, this fight at 205 once, even though it wasn't planned that way. Yeah. Did you feel comfortable there? Yeah, I mean, weight, it's over, overrated, you know? Like, for years, I was battling Verdum and uh, that little fucking cage of Kings. <laughs> so, no knee pads. He tried to take my head off for, for years, and I'm still alive. So, I don't think there is too much of a, to like, much worse than that, you know? Perfect. Thank you.